Hey there gamers, my name is Clint Hoagland and this is Creating Electronic Music with Chuck. In our last video, we did a deep dive into how MIDI messages are structured, all the way down to the ones and zeros that comprise those messages. At the end of that video, I said we were going to talk about chuggins in this video, but that is not what this video is about. It turns out that an upcoming release of Chuck is going to largely revamp the way chuggins are made and integrated into Chuck, and that release is going to include a whole lot of new chuggins, so I figured I'd wait until that release comes out to make a video so that it doesn't become obsolete so quickly. Instead, one of the things I've been batting around in my head is, what are some ways to write out a finished piece of music using Chuck? A friend of the channel that goes by the artist name Perilisk recently put out an album of retro video game inspired music called New Gravity, and listening to that got me wondering how doing similar music would feel in a Chuck environment. I decided to start out by transcribing a couple of classic video game soundtracks. Hopefully I can figure out how to do this in a way that is not too painful to create or to understand once it's done. As I mentioned in video 32, the Nintendo Entertainment System had a relatively simple music subsystem. It had two pulse oscillators, a triangle oscillator, and a noise source. That's four voices. Let's use that as a jumping off point to make some Chuck music. As I've said in the past, programming by wishful thinking is a nice way to get started when you don't know what to do, so what I'm going to do is, I'm going to start by writing a single part for a single voice into a text file. Then I'm going to consume that text file with some kind of script that reads the file via file I.O. in the way that we did in video 30. I don't know how that's going to work yet, let's get the part written and then see what we can do. Okay, in classic test-driven fashion, we've got the simplest thing that can possibly work here. So we've got the baseline for the first two bars, which is, uh, if you'll call the Super Mario Brothers ground theme, it goes da 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 and the baseline goes da 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 So that's what we have here is da da rest da 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 rest jumps up an octave in the fifth, and then uh, down to the fifth. So we got two bars here. So now I've got to figure out how to parse through this to play this with a triangle oscillator. So let's do that next. So what do we have here? I went back to the lesson 30, that's three zero, and I took some code from there. So we've got a try ask going to an envelope, going to the DAC, and then we've got a file IO object and a string tokenizer object. And then I set some defaults here. Uh, then I'm opening up my text file, which again looks like this, two bars. And then I'm going through line by line. And if the line has a length of zero, or if it's a, it starts with uh, forward slash forward slash, then I do a process comment on that line. If it starts with an R, then I do a process rest. If it, uh, otherwise it's a process note. Process comment just put, outputs the line to the console. Process rest does that as well, but it also advances time by the amount of the divisor that is in the line, which is a divisor of the bar length. So bar divided by the divisor goes into now. And then process note does the same thing, but it also uh, kicks the envelope and sets the note so that it will play a note it's called process note. And then as in lesson 30, there's a function called process extras that currently does nothing, uh, but it was a useful concept in that tutorial, so I thought that I would keep it around. Uh, let's take a look at what this listens. Let's take a listen to what this sounds like when we play try text one, which is specified right here. So that's the baseline for the first two bars of that Super Mario Brothers ground theme. I have gone ahead and written the first big phrase in the Super Mario Brothers ground theme, the uh, the one that everybody knows, the, the melody that everybody's used to. Uh, this is the bass line for that, and you can see it all on screen right now. It might not make a ton of sense to you unless you try to read through it, but it's like, it goes like seven, four, zero, five, seven, six, five. And you'll, uh, when I play it, it's going to probably sound a little bit sensical to you so but in order to do that i'm going to go in here and change this value to try to that text save it up and then i'm going to play it again
So that might sound a little bit familiar to you. Uh, so we now have a tri oscillator that's able to play through a score file of this type. What it can't do is go sequentially through a set of files, and so that's what I'm going to work on next. Okay, so what do we have? Uh, I created a score.ck file in which I declare a chip triosk object called triosk, and then I declare a bar. This is all things that did not exist in my chip triosk ck file before, but I'm doing my programming by wishful thinking idea, so I gave myself the ability to set a bar duration in the triask and then I am I gave myself the ability to play a file I'm going to play the, the file called try-1.txt and then I'm going to advance and because I'm sporking it which this is a little bit of a premature optimization I guess but I figure I'm going to want to spork all of the oscillators at once so they can play concurrently so I'm going to advance time inside the score file after kicking those files, and I'm just going to have to know that it's going to go for two bars. And then next, I'm going to go to try2.txt and advance for four bars, and then I'm going to do that again. Now, in order to make this chip triask available, I have to make that a class, which I have now done. I've made it a public class, and I wrapped everything that was in my file before in this. And then I created a set bar duration method so that I can declare that the bar length is a uh, whatever I want that to be. And that's that, in that way, we can set what the tempo is. And then the guts of the oscillator file before where it reads the lines and it plays the things that are in the file... Those are now inside a method called play file, which I called from here. And in order to make this file, this class, available to my score file, I've made another file that sits on top of it called initialize.ck. And that adds the chip triosk file to the chuck namespace in the chuck VM. And then it calls a score file, which then can then use the chip triosk class. It's now a type in the system because I declared it. And it can now, it has the set bar duration available and it has the play file function available. So let's play that. So now, in order to play this thing, we're going to call the chuck initialize file. So that's working great. So now we have a object that can play these score files. And I've got a triangle oscillator that uh, is an example of that. And so let's, I think what I'm going to do next is make a pulse oscillator that can do the same thing. So what I've done here is I've created a chip pulse osc, which is mostly the same as the chip tri osc. Uh, only differences are it uses a pulse oscillator instead of a triangle oscillator. And also, I moved the offset up an, an additional octave because uh, that sounded a little better. Additionally, I created a function called set pulse width so that we can call that from the score and uh, change the pulse width of things from the score just as a little bit of a convenience. In order to introduce this into our composition, we need to add that file via machine add before we call the score which then gives the score the ability to bring in a chip pulse osc, which I do two times because, as we recall, the Nintendo Entertainment System had two pulse oscillators and one triangle oscillator uh, and a noise source, which we'll get to later. Uh, and then I set the bar duration for... I need to set the bar duration for all of these guys. So I... And... Then I am setting the pulse width for both of our pulse oscillators via that method that I showed you a moment ago. And then I'm calling files that are analogous to that try1 and try2 text files. Uh, we can look at them for a moment if you want. This is uh, pulse1 one, uh, pulse one oscillators, first two bars. This is pulse2 oscillators, first two bars. And then here's the second four bars for pulse oscillator1. Second 
two bar or the next four bars for pulse oscillator two. Uh, I'm going to put all this stuff on GitHub so you don't have to re read this or freeze frame it or anything in this video. You can just download the whole thing from GitHub once I'm done. And you can walk the commits so you can see how this thing gets built up over time. If you don't know how GitHub works, maybe that could be a topic of a future video. Uh, anyway, here's how this thing sounds right now. I'll go back to the score. I don't know why. Uh, and then I'm going to launch Chuck Initialize. So this may uh, end up with a copyright takedown if it, I've made this accurate enough. Um, anyway, I'm going to add in the rest of the scores. This uh, actually at at one point I had the idea that I was going to like have note entry for this thing, but actually the score writing has been the easiest part of this so far. So I'm going to finish that up, and so we can hear the entire thing. And also there might be some architectural concerns I might want to take care of. And then the last thing we'll figure out is how to do the percussion based on a noise oscillator because that's going to be a little bit different than these other oscillators okay now i have gone through and i have finished writing out the score i've got try one two three four and five and pulse one one two three four and five and pulse two one two three four and five i did end up varying the pulse width at a couple of places throughout the score um i think that kind of mimics the way that it sounds in the real video game at least according to my rec recollection from playing that video game quite a lot quite a long time ago and now the score is 96 bars long each of the different part files uh, let's say p25 is an example of one that's like that's like 57 lines long but they're really simple it's actually pretty simple to make these things i found it uh not at all confusing to make each one in isolation like each one of these little blocks is a bar and you can find yourself like okay well this is like four eighth notes and then three triplets and this is like six eighth notes and a quarter note and like that all adds up to a bar and you can easily do that counting so yeah and then when you play the whole thing it sounds like this i might skip through it a little bit and you can always download the whole thing and listen to it later if you want to but let's hear what it sounds like i'll jump back to score um maybe i'll follow along a little bit So that's the Super Mario Brothers ground theme without the percussion. So I decided to punt on the architectural problem, which is that there's a lot of duplication between our oscillator classes. Um, and uh, I'll try to find a cooler way to design that maybe in the future. And if so, uh, keep an eye on the repo and maybe I'll improve it or maybe I'll just do it for a future video. Anyway, uh, so now I've made a noise oscillator and the difference... The, for this one is instead of having an oscillator it goes into it's a noise source and that goes into the envelope which then goes into the low pass filter and that's got a difference in its process note function which is down here it no longer has a thing where it sets the note uh using the midi to frequency function instead what it does is it takes the uh, it has a set noise function and what the set noise function does is it if the note is one then it sets the low pass frequency to this and then it sets the duration to very short if the note is two then it sets it to uh quadruple that frequency and still makes it short and if it is three then it is quadruple that frequency and the duration is longer and so the way that the parts look uh here's one uh, noise three so you can see i just use the two different or the three different note values to represent the three different noise notes that are used in the Super Mario Brothers ground theme. And then I just set different timing for them. So this is sort of a swing time. So it's like a quarter. And then this is like a uh, triplet quarter followed by a triplet eighth. And that's how you represent that in this timing scheme. And then I just added it, the initialized thing. I added it to the initialization, added that chip noise oscillator, and then I added all of those noise parts into the score. And then what you get is this.
Shout out to our guy Koji Kondo for creating probably the most influential piece of instrumental music of the past 50 years. Um, anyway, uh, that is one way to make a video game style tune. I won't go so far as to call it a chip tune, but it's video game style, NES style tune in Chuck. Uh, leave a comment if you've got any questions or ideas about ways we could have improved this. Um, I'm going to keep on trying to find some ways to make finished pieces of music in Chuck because I think that's something interesting that we have not explored a lot of up until this point, but I think that's something cool that we could explore. Other things that we might look at in the future could be the future of Chuggins, and also we want to look at the Chuck AI stuff that came out in the more recent versions of Chuck. Uh, thanks for watching.